Hey everybody, thanks for taking the time to click through and watch this. Uh, to start with, we'll, we'll go uh, through the coordinates. If you feel like you have something at any time, you can, of course, you can skip it. Uh, but here we go. So this is called the uh, Cartesian coordinate plane. Um, and that just means we have two number lines uh, perpendicular, perpendicular to each other. Here's the x number line. Here's the y number line. We have positive x's on the right, negative on the left, positive y's on the top, and negative on the bottom. Okay. Uh, when we look at these guys, these are all called ordered pairs. This is all the information you need to put a point in the plane. It gives you an x and a y. So if the x is 2 and the y is 3, then we go to x is 2, y is 3, and we put a point right there. All right. Just good practice to, to not make mistakes when plotting points on the plane. Uh, negative 5, 6. So the x is negative 5, so we come out to here. And the y is 6, so that would go to right there. Uh, oh, actually, that's... I counted wrong. That's, that would be negative 5, 5. This is negative 5, 6. Uh, so this would be A. This would be B. Remember I said to label. C is 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the x, and the y is negative 1. And this one I probably saw the most mistakes on this following one. Here, x is 0, so x is nowhere. Don't go anywhere in the horizontal direction. Stay right in the middle, so don't move from here. And then the y is negative 2, so it goes down to here, and that's d. All right. This one, some of you figured out this angle. I don't think anybody figured out the side. That's fine. Uh, probably didn't talk about the Pythagorean theorem. You don't know about that, so that's fine. Um, for the angle x, all the interior angles of a triangle should add up to 180. Seems like quite a few of you know that. Uh, this little thing like that, that means that this is a 90 degree angle. So this is 90 of the 180. Okay, so 180 should be equal to that 90 plus 47 plus whatever x is. And we can just solve for x here. Uh, you could manipulate this equation, you could just subtract 47 and 90 from 180 in your head, or whatever. Uh, if I subtract 90 from both sides, right, like this, then I'll have 90 degrees is equal to 47 plus x. And if I subtract 47 from both sides, needlessly long process, didn't need to do all that, but might as well use some algebra here. Why not? So the angle x must be 43 degrees. This side y, if you wanted to figure out how long that side was, there's this thing called the Pythagorean Theorem for these kinds of triangles with a right angle in them, only when you have a right angle. So the longest side, the hypotenuse, has a relationship with these other two sides called the legs. And that relationship is that if you take this side and square it, and you take this side and you square that too, and you add those together, you get what this side would be if you squared that. Famously, uh, most people will say, if you ask them what the Pythagorean Theorem is, they say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, this is y. This is always the longest side, the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the other two squares. We have 36 plus 64 equals y squared. We have 100 equals y squared. But that's what y squared is. So this number is not y, but it's what you would get if you took y and you multiplied it by itself. What number can you multiply by itself to get 100? That would be 10. So then this is 10. But it looks like a lot of you didn't know that, and that is fine. Here, we're just practicing our order of operations. And I'll tell you all about what I think about order of operations later. But in most parts of the world, this is the order that is followed. Okay, I write it like this. Uh, I think Mr. Zelay has it like this. Maybe other teachers have it like this. Because it uh, helps to get rid of any confusion about um, multiplication always coming first and division always coming next. Okay? We see parentheses first because it's on top. Exponents next. Multiplication and division are on it the same level. Okay? Neither one of them gets preference over the other. So from left to right, whatever it is, you do it first and then addition and subtraction. Here we see there's a multiplication, right? No parentheses, no exponents, but there is multiplication. That happens first. 
Okay. Because if we didn't have this order to follow, what would stop us from doing this? You know, doing 8 minus 7, then multiplying that by 2, and getting the answer of 2. Um, the thing that stops us is this order that we decided to do. So multiplication first, that's going to be 16. Minus 7, that's going to be 9. Okay, again, for reference, I'll write this over here. Okay, uh, no parentheses to follow. Nobody telling us what to do yet. We can make our own parentheses, though, uh, because exponents come first. So first, I will square the 4. Not square the 5, not square this 5, but square only the 4, because it's only attached to the 4. There are no parentheses telling me anything else. All right, so I'm going to square that number. So this is some number, right? Uh, then what am I going to do? Uh, well, in parentheses, okay, exponents de dealt with that. And multiplication or division. There's only a multiplication here. So I'm going to multiply 5 by whatever this is. That'll be done. That's a number. And then I will subtract 5, and that'll be the last thing that I do. So first I square. So I get 5 times 16 minus 5, right? And then I have that parentheses there telling me this is what comes next. 5 times 16. Uh, 5 times 16 is 80. Minus 5, 75. My answer is 75. Okay, here, multi let's see, no, pr no parentheses, mo no exponents, multiplication and division. Well, this positive 6 here should get multiplied by this 4, okay? And this, uh, this here's 16 should get multiplied, or sorry, divided by this 2, right? They should happen on the same level, okay? Neither one of them has to happen before the other. They're actually not really interacting within each other with each other at all so they can happen kind of at the same time right so uh, dealt with that dealt with that we did the multiplication and division and then addition and subtraction so we would take this and add this and then when we're done with that we would subtract whatever this number was right so first we're going to multiply and divide so we're going to multiply 6 times 4 and get 24 here we're going to have a minus whatever this is 16 divided by 2 is 8 Okay. And then we just add and subtract all the way across. 3 plus 24 is 27. Minus 8 is going to be 19. So we get 19. A lot of you are very good at this, so that's, that's very good. Here I made a typo. I did the math too quick in my head. I should have said 288, not 144. Okay? Uh, but this one, I just was kind of trying to see... Could I confuse you at all, or would you get the answer that if we are very strict about agreeing to this order, and the way that I described it, working multiplication and division from left to right, and not multiplication first because multiplication comes first in PEMDAS, okay, but working them at the, at the same level from left to right, then when I'm stuck with the decision to either divide this by 2, or take 2 first and multiply it by 12, right? Most people add this together automatically and get 12. Which do I do? Well, in this class, for any time that I'm talking to you ever, 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 and I can tell by talking to any math teacher in the school, it will be left to right. Divisions first on the left, do it first, then do that multiplication, okay? So, 48 divided by 2 would be 24. This is 12. We can kind of do these at the same time. This isn't separate parentheses. This is the division, so we can do them at the same time. Okay, they're separate from each other. No matter what order I do them in, it's, neither one's going to affect the other, is what I'm saying. So this is 12. 24 times 12 is 288. I wanted to see what you thought, okay? Um, I liked when people said neither one of them are right, because that was, you know, correct. Technically correct if we're following the, that order that uh, of parentheses first exponents multiplication division from left to right addition subtraction from left to right. Um, next, we're going to solve this equation if if you can. Um, if you're not familiar with this at all, just think of this. Think of this as just a number that I don't know. What is this? It's a mystery. Okay, but there are clues to this mystery. If I take this number, mystery that it is, and subtract six from it, I will get eighteen. Okay. So what number can I subtract 6 from to get 18? Okay, uh, we kind of think about it for a while and uh, maybe plug a few numbers in and figure out 24. If I subtract 26 from 24, subtract 6 from 24, I get 18. Okay, here is the best practice uh, habit to get into. If I have a subtraction of 6, I should cancel out that minus 6, right? Since I'm, I have a negative 6 here. 
If I add 6 to that negative 6, I'll get 0. So what I have on this side is m plus 0. So I just have really m. Um, but if I were to add 6 to this side and not to this side, it'd be like I had a set of scales that got all out of balance, all out of whack. Scale starts out equal on both sides. On this side it was 18. On this side it was m minus 6. So if I add 6 to this side, I should add 6 to this side so that both sides stay equal. Okay. So add 6 to both sides, 18 plus 6 is 24. Uh, here, a uh, different idea. 4 times some number is uh, 36. So this number y must be 1 fourth of 36, right? Because 4 times that number is 36, so that number itself must be whatever 1 fourth of 36 is. So that is 9. y is 9. This one, kind of 2 rolled into 1. Here's a mystery number. Multiplication comes first, so it's kind of like linked together. These two numbers, they're linked together, all right? So what I'll do is I'll subtract 2, because on this side, it's like the last thing that I would do. So it's actually the, the thing that I can just kind of cancel out easily, okay? If I were to try and divide this by 10, that would be problematic because, well, we'll talk about it more at another time. Um, now we have 70, 10x equals 70, divide by 10 on both sides, and x equals 7. 7. Here, getting more and more tricky, just seeing how well you guys could do. Um, here, we, it's just this plus this plus this plus this, and hopefully you remember that when we add numbers, it doesn't matter what number or what order we add them in. So I could just add these 15s together, just scoot this 15 over with this 15, and then I'd have negative x plus 3x plus 30 equals negative 4. Then these are the same kind of thing. 3x and negative 1x, they go together, right? It's like I have three apples and a negative apple. I have two apples, okay? Um, so it's still plus 30. Plus 30 equals negative 4. And now this is a lot like this guy here. So we have a, a number here that we're adding. We'll subtract that off. And we have 2x equals negative 3. 34, because this is a negative 4. Divide by 2 on both sides, negative 17. All right, here we're going to add two fractions. We have uh, a need for a common denominator. And the reason for that, let me show you really, really quickly. Let me show you a picture of 3 fourths. 1, 2, 3 of these. Okay, 3 fourths means I have 3 of these, the number of pieces, and this is how many pieces it takes to make a whole thing, a whole pie in this case, okay? 3 fifths, let me draw a better circle, looks a little more like this. This is more like what fifths look like, right? And I have 3 of those. These, and let me color code this. Uh, uh, let's see, I can lock that in place, and then I can do this. I'm going to change this color. Uh, change it to black. Okay? These and these are different things. Right? It's like I have three uh, dogs and three uh, ham sandwiches. And I say, what? how much is three dogs plus three ham sandwiches? Well, they're just three dogs and three ham sandwiches. I guess... Uh, you probably have no more ham sandwiches if you had three dogs. They would have eaten them. But they're not the same, so I can't say there's like six of them, right? And in the case of dogs and ham sandwiches, there's no commonality, okay? But here, what I can do with these pieces, I can cut each one of them into five pieces. Okay, so now each of those four pieces work it into five pieces. I can cut each of these five pieces into three pieces each. All right, this should be all equal. It is not to scale, and it's not a very accurate drawing. But here we took four pieces, and each of them we cut into five pieces each. So that's four, one, two, three, four groups of one, two, three, four, five each, right? One, two, three, four, five, five again, five again, five again, five, four times. 5 times 4, that's 20 pieces that make up this hole. This is 5 pieces that we each cut, cut into um, 
Oh, we were supposed to cut this into four pieces each, so let's fix that real quick. Okay, so they're cut into four pieces each, not three. So we cut these four pieces into five each, and these five pieces into four each. Each of these now is made of 20 pieces, and uh, we did it in such a way that we could count how many of those 20ths we have, right? So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right? We had three pieces out of the four to start with. We cut each of those three pieces into five pieces, so now we have 15, right? So that's what we're doing when we, when we multiply this by 5. And getting 20, we're saying that the whole now is made of 20 pieces. And when we take this and we say we multiply it by 5, well, each of these pieces, which are th this big each, well, we cut those into 5 pieces as well. So there's 15 of those pieces, and 20 would make a whole. And here we cut each of these into 4 pieces, and so we have 12, okay? So we have 15 of the 20ths plus 12 20ths, 15, 12, we add them together, we get 27 20ths, that's a great answer. If instead you said 1 and 7 20ths, that's great as well. Here at multiplying, we'll multiply straight across, okay? 4 times 9 is 36, 15 times 10 is 150. We can divide these both by, uh, how much can we divide these by? These four. I bet maybe more, but we'll divide them both by, let's see. Um, no, this one, not this one by four. By six. We can divide this by six. We can divide this by six. Uh, if you divide this by six, you get uh, 25. So 6 25ths. You can see I struggled to come up with the, uh, the biggest common uh, factor that these had. But I, c I know that 2 goes into both of these, so I could have gone from 36 1 50ths to uh, divide that in half, 18 75ths. Okay. Then I can divide those by 3, and I get 6 25ths. It's the same thing. Here, I just was seeing how familiar you are with uh, variables or unknowns, and uh, and then it was just order of operations after that, right? So we just need to replace x with 4, and then apply the order of operations that we agree to. So 3 plus 3 times 9, because that's inside the parentheses. 9 to the third first, because it is uh, an exponent. So let's see what that is. 9 to the third. Turn it on. And the third, 729. Multiply that by 3. Okay, and then we're going to add 3. You can see that down there. 2190. So 2190. What's 15% of 80? I'll just tell you real quick uh, without going back into the details of it. If you take the decimal and you move it back, two times, you get 0.15, multiply 0.15 by 80, right, multiply by 80, and you get 12. Here, whoops, um, find the measures of the unknown angles, okay, so this one's 34, and if you remember any geometry at all, you might remember that, well, since th these are just straight lines, and by the way, these arrows mean that they're parallel, I don't know if you were aware of that or not. Oh, sorry about that interruption. Um, so these are uh, parallel lines. This is what you call a transversal. And uh, this angle is 34. These are two straight lines. So these angles just kind of make sense. They're, they're what you call vertical angles. They're equal to each other. So x must be 34. What about y? Well, let's see. Um, these are two parallel lines. Um, and... Let's see if we can make sense of this. Um, well, I was going to see if I could common sense my way there. But if you've had lessons on parallel lines and transverse lines, um, 
whenever you have uh, this angle here and this alternate angle here, they're equal to each other. Okay, and since this is 34 degrees, and this must then add up to 180 here. Okay, so this must be one. Um, 146, 146, okay, yeah, so that's 146, uh, so this must also be 146, okay, this guy here, I bet you it makes sense, if this is, say, the ground, and this is something that is exactly parallel to the ground, and the straight line is cutting across both of them, then this guy here, that's 34, must be the same as this guy, so it's also 34. Okay, If Amber travels at 70 miles an hour for three hours, then uh, in the first hour, she's going to go 70 miles. In the second hour, she's going to go 70 miles. In the third hour, she's going to go 70 miles. So there we have three groups of 70. So 70 times 3. So uh, 210 miles. Next one. Let's see, traveling 65 miles per hour, how long will it take Amber to go? 350 miles. Now we have something like uh, the whole distance is 350 miles. So in one hour, she's going to travel 65 miles. In another hour, she's going to travel 65 miles, and so on and so on. And if I could draw this perfectly to scale, she would have draw driven 65 miles so many times, right? And every time she drives 65 miles, an hour has gone by. So how long will it take? Well, it's however many 65s fit into 350. So we take 350 and divide it by 65. Let's see what we get. 5.3, let's call it 9. So 5.39 hours. Last one. Check in your familiarity with uh, algebra again. Uh, in order to rent a car, Susan must pay a one-time fee of $30. So she just goes in she has to pay $30 to rent the car at all before she even drives it. Uh, on top of that, she has to pay $0.37 cents per mile. And if she drives X miles, which of the following expressions uh, fits her situation? Um, first off, this one I'm going to just discount because it has subtraction. It doesn't seem like the situation calls for subtracting money. We're adding money on. That's what it's going to cost. Um... Let's see, we're multiplying by x in some of these. Should I add 30 plus 0.37x? I mean, I would add these together first. That would be 30.37. And then I'm multiplying that by the number of miles that she travels. That shouldn't, that's not right, because the 30, that's just one time. I don't have to pay that for every mile. So the 30 shouldn't be multiplied by x. So, you know, I shouldn't even be involved in that. Same reasoning here, it's not 30 every time she drives a mile, right? If she drives 10 miles, she's not going to pay $300 plus 37 cents. She's going to pay $30 plus $3.70 if she drives 10 miles, okay? So it's this one right here. Uh, that is it. That's the last one. Again, I appreciate you clicking on that link, taking the time to watch through this. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.